Stop! Stop! Stop it right there. I know what you're thinking. Oh, you can say that. Opinions are subjective. Gen 7 is way better than Gen 5. But no! No. There are two kinds of people who clicked on this video. Likely, you possess basic knowledge and intelligence and can tell that Generation 5 is far superior way and beyond any other generation or you're just on a blasphemous amount of copium unable to see the brilliance that lies before your eyes. Pokemon's fifth generation. For it is an incontestable fact that Gen 5 is indeed peak Pokemon. What's that? I'm being an arrogant piece of shit with no perception of other people's opinions that's being influenced heavily by nostalgia. Anyways, these are some pretty bold claims I'm making here. I mean, there are a lot of very well-liked Pokemon games, and I'm only including the mainline games here, of course, like Pokemon Platinum, Pokemon Ruby, Pokemon Sapphire, or Pokemon Shield. The point is, I gotta back up my claim here. I gotta make a case for myself. I gotta prove that Gen 5 is peak. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And what better way to start than with its story? That's right, I bet you've heard this all too many times. Oh, Gen 5 is so good because the story, it's so good and it's so deep and it's just, it's just so good. And while Gen 5's story is far better than any other Pokemon game story, that doesn't necessarily mean much since the bar isn't set very high, let's be honest. What that doesn't mean is that the narrative in these games doesn't play a big role in making your journey in the Unova region as memorable as it is. In short, the evil team of the generation is called Team Plasma. Their leader Getsis claims that it is bad to catch Pokemon and have them fight against each other. He questions whether humans and Pokemon are in a symbiotic relationship, where both sides benefit, or if we are simply using our Pokemon, virtually enslaving them. He therefore preaches that all Pokemon should be freed. At first glance, this seems quite reasonable, right? This was the first time a villain introduced had an idea that actually sounded like it made it some sense. However, this is a Pokemon game, so he had to have had some kind of hidden motives that made him evil. It turns out that Getsis has an adoptive son called Ken, who shares Getsis' supposed dream of freeing all Pokemon from suffering. What we don't know is that Getsis has manipulated and engineered N since he was a toddler, to hate everyone that mistreats their Pokemon. His entire childhood he had been isolated from humans and he was only allowed to make contact with Pokemon that were artificially hurt and mistreated by Getsis himself. So his resulting hatred is understandable. It also explains why he was surprised to see that your Pokemon aren't hurt and opposed to you but rather seemed inclined. He was fed a distorted view of the world, which completely fell apart when Gessis' true motives came to light, complete power over the world. We join N on his journey, on which he redefines who he wants to be and what he believes in. It's a rather simple and linear storyline, but it's a heartfelt one. It's one in which the characters actually evolve and don't just stay the same the entire game. Not only that, it questions the Pokemon franchise as a whole, whether forcefully catching Pokemon and battling is immoral or not. For that alone, I find this story to stand above all others we've gotten so far. Alright, the next reason for Gen 5's superiority is world building. Now, what does that word even mean? The definition is as follows. World building is the process of constructing a world, originally an imaginary one, sometimes associated with a fictional universe. Developing an imaginary setting with coherent qualities such as history, geography and ecology is a key task for many science fiction or fantasy writers. In other words, if a game has good world building, it feels believable, authentic and like a real place where real people would live. Does Gen 5 do this? Uh, but it does it a hell of a lot better than any other Pokemon game, I can tell you that much. What this generation achieves better than any other generation is making it feel like the world existed before you. And it doesn't just do that by telling you, oh once upon a time this happened, no it shows you. Every single city, every town is unique, has a well 
thought out lore. You can enter almost every building, you can talk to everyone, and they will tell you interesting things about the history of said town. Why it looks like the way it does, why things work like the way they do around there. Besides some ridiculously creative and fun locations, like the specially themed gates before Victory Road that checked all your gym badges, there are some seriously well thought out places. The Village Bridge is one of my favorite locations. It is said that the village bridge is over 200 years old and that it was constructed after the river beneath it flooded and washed away the houses along the banks. And the houses were rebuilt on the bridge to prevent the town from being destroyed again. You can walk to the old man in charge of the bridge and he will tell you of these events. As a way of coming back together after these troubled times, the inhabitants of the village bridge often like to make music together. So if you go around talking to people, they will literally add their respective instrument to the theme of the location. It goes from sounding like this. To sounding like this. This is what makes a world feel alive. A world that doesn't feel like it's just there for you, but that you just happen to be there and the world exists independently from you. You just happen to be visiting it. And I haven't even mentioned the designs yet. It, yes, the region is very circular and that is a downside. However, the locations themselves are nothing short from brilliant. Castelia City is to this day the best implementation of a large-scale city I've ever seen in a Pokemon game. It is modeled after New York City, which is beautifully realized by the soaring skyscrapers, the busy alleys and the bustling atmosphere. You can talk to every NPC too and they will tell you about their life. You can enter every building and engage with the world. I could literally go on for hours, but Castelia City is just one example. And that brings us to the thing that accentuates the world. It gives this deeply thought through and lively region a character of its own. It's the music, alright? I, I don't care how much you dislike Gen 5, there's at least one Gen 5 track that you have bopped your head to. I instead of trying to describe this in words, which is an impossible task anyways, I let the music speak for itself.
special, isn't it? But what makes it so special? Well, I don't really know. Maybe it's the nostalgia at play here, or maybe it's just that Game Freak was at its peak around this time. But at the end of the day, does it really matter? It slaps. And that's all I really care about, it slaps. No matter what's currently happening in the game, the soundtrack always contributes to the moment. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why Gen 5 music indeed goes hard. And with that out of the way, it's time to address the elephant in the room, the Pokemon designs. Honestly, I'm surprised I got this far without talking about this, and obviously it has to be mentioned. It is a well-known fact that a lot, and I mean a lot of people, dislike Gen 5 purely because they dislike some of the Pokemon. And can I be frank here, I doubt they actually dislike the designs, I believe they just dislike change. Let me explain. You see, this was the first gen since Gen 1 where the player was forced to use only new Pokemon the entire way through the game. It was only in post-game where you got access to previous Pokemon. Gen 5 is the gen that introduced the most new Pokemon with 156. While I don't blame these people for disliking change, since that's just kind of how humans work, I do wish they'd reconsider their opinion. The starters are okay, I understand they're not amazing, however Embor has a spectacular shiny. Watchog and the weird monkey Pokemon, yes, I understand, these are kinda goofy, even I can't deny that, but the dog line? Really? I mean come on, these are great designs, and they have a huge move pool as well so they're super fun to use. Mana is a Pokemon that eats dreams, the Striker is an electric horse, Excadrill is a literal drill? Conkledor is a construction worker that taught us humans how to make concrete. Crocodile just looks intimidating, Caracosta, Archaeops and Zoroark are just iconic designs, and Pokemon like Garbodor and Vanillox received a lot of hate and I really don't see why. Garbodor symbolizes the trash found in America's big cities, which is where you know by set, and Vanillox it's it's just it's just ice cream. And I mean I guess you don't like ice cream or something? I don't know. But it wasn't just the designs themselves that made Pokemon feel unique and alive. The moving sprites are somewhat controversial in that they are either loved or, well, despised. And if you've somehow not been listening at all up until now, you'd probably know which side of that spectrum I'm on. Personally, I loved these. They gave Pokemon so much more character. The unique movement combined with the best sprites ever, the best colors ever, this was just a recipe for perfection. I mean, come on, compare this to what we have today. 3D models look boring, they're washed out, and they're all just... They all just kind of blend in together, but not Gen 5. No, every Pokemon had a personality, and it was unique. And that keyword really defines the whole generation. The pinnacle of the Pokemon franchise, it was unique. It was unique in the way of how it represented Game Freak's passion and innovation. The passion and innovation that seemingly is missing from the modern Pokemon games, at least to an extent. These games did not deserve to have the lowest sales of any Pokemon game. These games did not and still do not deserve all the hate that comes their way. But you can't change human nature. We don't like change, and that's just the way it is. This doesn't apply to me since Pokemon White was my introduction. To the franchise. So yeah, I am filled to the brim with nostalgia for that game, but I don't just say the things I say without genuinely believing them. At the end of the day, I can talk all I want about these games, but what these games have done, what they represent, and what they manage to convey is truly beyond words. Game Freak showed character here. They showed what they are capable of. It's the reason I'm hopeful and why I always will be hopeful for every new game that releases from them, no matter how mediocre or unfinished their recent ones might be. So there you go bozos, Gen 5 is clearly the undisputed, objectively, factually, scientifically best generation. And if you still disagree, well, I got nothing for you, your opinion is clearly trash. Alright, alright, maybe that's a little too far, but on a real note, let me know your opinions in the comments below. Regardless of whether you agree or not, if this video made your brain release dopamine, you should consider subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoy this type of content, you should subscribe anyways. Alright, that's it for me, see ya.